Hi, welcome to another edition of Seven's Pinballarama. 1952 Chicago coin big hit. Kind of a funky uh, old EM. Um, no score reels. It's just lights behind the back glass. Pretty neat. Uh, so let me tell you a little story. I was at um, I was at a wedding and I got introduced to a woman, and she she stops. She goes, "Oh, you're the pinball guy." Like. I guess I'm the pinball guy now. <laughs> so, uh, not too long after that, my neighbor down the street uh, has an a antique store. And he came and he said, uh, so I have a pinball machine that's been in my garage for the last 10 years. I bought it from a guy who had it in his garage for like 10 years or more. I got it thinking that I would fix it up. I never got around to it. Uh, you're the pinball guy. <laughs> you want to buy it? <laughs> and, uh, I'm the pinball guy, so I bought it. <laughs> so now I have a 1952 Chicago coin big hit. Um, it looks like it's been sitting in a garage for a while. The The play field actually is not too bad. Uh, there's a few little missing spots here and there. I haven't done anything to it, so it's still got like, you know, packing peanuts and uh, here's some pine needles. There's a lot of dirt and stuff. Um, but it, it looks complete except for a flipper. Uh, and maybe I think there's supposed to be a post in between the flippers because they're like this far apart. So, you know, one would hope. Um, it has a little, there's a little bit of tearing um, around the apron paper there, which should be easy enough to recreate. I haven't plugged it in yet because with a machine like this that's been sitting for so long, uh, you want to be very careful before you plug it in. There could be uh, wires that have frayed. Some things could be jammed and gummed up. And when the coil fires, it may continue to fire and burn out. So you kind of want to give one machine of this era and, uh, you know, history. Give it a good once over. So I opened up, the first thing I did was I opened up the back box. And all of the separate units are, were seized. They, they weren't moving at all. It looks like someone sprayed them down with WD-40, which may have worked at the time, but uh, as WD-40 sits and it is exposed to air and uh, as it ages, a bunch of dust will stick to it, it'll get all goopy and gummy, and it'll make matters worse. So don't do WD-40. Um, a lot of these mechanisms actually kind of are intended to run dry, so oiling them will just kind of cause problems down the line. What parts are supposed to run dry is just, it depends on, you know, what the mechanism is and what it's actually doing. And I can show you a little bit of that. Um, the other thing I did when I, when I, uh, opened up the, the back box, I, I noticed that there was a little bit of flaking right here on, on the, on the back glass and just a little touch here and there. So I wanted to actually pull the glass out and, um, coat it with uh, Krylon triple thick which I've made a video uh, in the past on that. You can go check it out. Um, I, it's my go-to thing now. I, I love Krylon Triple Thick for, for saving these old back glasses. But I, I went, to, went to go take it out and it was actually a whole lot worse than what I could tell from the front. All of this white, especially like up in here, you can kind of see, you can't see it, I can see it. All in here, all of this stuff. This was all like, if I had removed the back glass, it just would have fallen right off of there. So I actually sprayed Krylon with it in the box still because I didn't dare move it or touch it. And um, there was a little piece that was flaking right here and the air caught it and whoop, off it went. But everything else seemed to be kind of salvaged. So that's good. And then later I can take this thing out and touch it up or, you know, do whatever to it. Uh, one of the things though that I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning those stepper units. So I made a quick little video on that, uh, just showing what, what a gummy stepper unit looked like. Uh, so now I'm going to make a video on how to clean them. So most stepper units are going to be about the same, a uh, little bit different mechanisms, different styles, kind of whatever, but the, but the, what they do is all going to be the same. So I'm going to show you these and maybe, you know, you have a Williams machine or a Gottlieb or something with a stepper in it and, uh, you can kind of figure out what it's doing based on what I'm going to show you here because 
yeah, they're all about the same. So let's go back there. We'll take a look at the steppers and uh, I'm gonna take one apart uh, and we'll, we'll clean it up and we'll put it back together and we'll kind of see how it was and how it's supposed to be. Okay, this is the back of the, uh, the big hit machine. These are stepper units. And essentially what they do is that they, they step forward notch by notch and then on the back of them, there's this wiper assembly with all these points of contact. And as it moves forward, it'll make contact with these various little dots all over here. Uh, it's a switch, so it, it closes the circuit and then that circuit does whatever it does. I think all of these back here are for scoring. Um, this, there's one over here that's for the credit. This one doesn't, this one just cycles around in circles. So I don't know what that one's for yet. Um, I don't have the schematics for this and I haven't really dug into it. But what I'm doing right now is I want to make sure that everything moves as it's supposed to before I fire it up. And then I can kind of start looking to see what things do and, and troubleshooting where there might be problems. I might luck out. I might fire it right up and it might work. I doubt it, but it is, you know, we'll see. Um, so on the stepper units, when they're, when they're super gummy, this will advance and it won't do anything. Like it won't, it won't advance the wheel. It, it, this one, this one's all gummy and I'll show you that. This one I've already cleaned. So let's, let's see what it, what it's supposed to do. And then we'll look at one that doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> So this will fire. You can see how it advances that, that thing. On the back side, as it fires, you can see the wiper is moving forward, making contact with various things along the way. Then when it's time to reset it, this coil up here will fire and it all springs back to normal. So we have a couple of points that um, will get all super gummy. And that is this shaft goes through to the to the wiper mechanism, this where where the shaft and and the thing that it goes through that'll get all gross. There's another point up here where where this pivot point. Let me release that. This pivot point right here that will get all gross. Um, this one down here can get all gross. It's just you have to look at yours and see okay what's moving and. Uh, uh, what isn't moving and where, what should I take apart to clean and, and uh, remove all the old gunk out of there. Really it. So on this one, to get this one going, I got into this one, I got into this one and this one, and that freed everything all up. It looks like there's another pivot point here, but that one seems okay. Um, and then, yeah, that one's fine. So, okay. Enough talk about that, I guess. Let's take this lower one apart and, um, Kind of take a look and see how to take them apart how to mark things okay so these steppers uh are actually on this sort of hinged door thing as you saw some of them um you actually have to take the whole thing off um but these these are held in by two little screws so we'll just uh pop those out And kind of watch what you're doing when you're doing this, that you don't um, break any of these contacts uh, or any of these uh, little solder points. And if you do, make a note of it so you can put it back together again. I did on the top one when I was cleaning it, it actually, one of these uh, solder points actually broke off from the coil. So it's just kind of hanging, it's still connected. So I have to kind of put a little something there to hold it back into place. Uh, you know, on these old machines, you never know what's going to happen with them. Um, okay. so. The first thing that we need, I'm, first thing I'm going to do on this is this center one is probably going to be uh, one of the main, um, main problem points, I guess, on this. So let's see if we can get this open. This one is actually, let's, we want to reset it back to zero. This one's actually pre already marked and a lot of people will mark um, the, the, top 12 o'clock position with a little 12 o'clock position up here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on this other camera. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, so we don't have to mark it. We already know when we put it back together where it's supposed to go. This, this assembly is held on just with this one bolt. 
Uh, so that's pretty easy to take off. This is, there's a tension on this spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release that spring just so it doesn't go, uh, go flying off somewhere else on me or I get caught on it. So let's see if we can get this thing off there. I'm going to just put this in, in one of these little holes to sort of hold it in place. Cause I don't think I can actually do this with my fingers. crap -o -rama. So I, uh, I caught my hand on something. You have to kind of watch out for that. <laughs> I need, I need an knock crap board. <laughs> I'm going to go and uh, put something on this and uh, I'll be back in a minute. All fixed. Uh, okay. So where were we? So let's reset this guy back. Oh, he went too far. Interesting. Okay. This one was really stuck on one of the other ones. There we go. So that's that's the the wiper assembly. That's all it is. A little starfish thing. A little bit of wear, but we'll clean all this up. So looking at the back, it's gross. Lots of gunk on there. So I'm going to use just one of these uh, sponges with a little scrubby pad on it um, to clean all that up. I'm going to put a little bit of naphtha solvent on there. Naphtha does a good job at sort of breaking down um, the oils and garbage that are on there. So I'm going to wipe it all off with that first. And then this is a contact point here for the little um, uh, for the little wiper assembly thing. So I'm going to clean all the crap off of there. Okay, that seems pretty clean. So now I'm just going to take my uh, my scrubby sponge. And I'm just going to go over this until they're nice and shiny. And it doesn't really matter if you scratch this this uh, thing because you know who cares. We're interested in getting all of these little tabs nice and shiny. I'm going to do the same thing to my um, my little wiper, but I'm actually going to be sort of careful with it. Oh, that one has a bite taken out of it. I don't really want to bend these arms all out of whack too much. Nice and shiny. So then this also has some gunk on it. We'll clean that off. Okay. So that's ready to go. 
Let's see if we can get this shaft out of here. So you want to make sure that these things aren't in the way. And this whole thing will just come right out like that. Doesn't look too terrible. Just use the naphtha to clean off all of the points of contact. So this right here, well, this section right here, can you see it? Where is it? There we go. This section is gonna make a contact against this. So we wanna just clean all of that garbage out of there. And I'm not really gonna, you know, I'm not gonna wipe the, there's WD-40 residue all over this thing. But I think I'm gonna kind of, I mean, it's all dried up. It's, I'm gonna kind of leave it because I think it's gonna help protect this metal if, uh, uh, you know, if it gets in kind of a humid spot or something at one point. I'll kind of, I don't know, I think it'll protect it. So there's probably a better way to clean the, uh, the inside of this um, tube, but uh, I'm just gonna use naphtha and a paper towel and I'll just run it through there a few times. It just doesn't look too terribly bad. Maybe if it was more corroded or something then I might do something other than this, but I think what's gumming it all up is just old lubricant and dirt. I've got this little center business all cleaned out. I've got this all scrubbed down. I've got my little uh, wiper starfish all cleaned out. So let's put it back together again. I'm gonna put some naphtha on a rag. And I'm just gonna wipe down this area that I scrubbed. I want all of that dust and garbage off of there. Nice and clean. So I'm using, I'm going to put a little bit of synthetic grease and this has, um, I'm using ultra slick. Um, this has a little bit of Teflon in it as well. So I'm just going to put a touch on here and I'm going to go over all of these little points with it. And this will help it from corroding and oxidizing. You don't need a whole lot. I mean, really just a thin, thin layer on there. In fact, I may have put a little too much on. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna put a little bit on this. Again, not, not a lot. There's not a lot of space that it needs to fill up. all the parts that are going to make contact. So if you look at this, you'll notice that there's a little, let's see if I can get this in a way that you can see it. There we go. There's a little notch taken out of this in the teeth. And on this one, that little notch sits right above where the, the little reset section is. So I'm going to put it back in that way. that around make sure that's all free moving seems to be we'll 
set that back to zero. There's a, there's also, I should, guess I should show you, there's also a block on this side. So that's going to go to this. There's going to be something that stops it from moving. So when you put it back in, in this particular case, it wants to sit here because it's going to forward itself and then back again. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of Teflon on this guy. Just on each contact, not very much. And then we want to put him back on so that our, they're pre-marked, but uh, red, red. Pretty straightforward. Oh, you know what? Here's a point of contact too. All right, let's see if that moves now. Now put the tension spring back on just to see if we've got it freed up enough. I think it'll probably work. On these tension springs, usually what I do is I tighten them up until they feel tight enough, get it all back into place, and I may have to give it another wrap around. You don't want them too tight, otherwise uh, the coils don't have enough power to, to move the thing. They're, they're, there's too much tension. Um, so you kind of have to fiddle with them. When I put this back together again, I may have to kind of tweak these, but for manually moving these, let's see if it goes back. It does not, not enough tension. There we go. That part was easy. So this still feels maybe a little, little thick. So let's, I'm gonna take this apart and we'll clean this. And uh, let's see if we can't give that a little bit more movement. So this one is just held on by a couple of springs. This little guy comes out. It's sticky. There we go. So let's clean that up and put it back together again. All right, so I've got that cleaned up, but you know, this little coil plunger looks kind of filthy and gross and it, I'm getting a little resistance there. So I'm gonna take this off and we'll clean it. This one is just held on with a couple of screws. There's a coil stop. Coil stop. And then this should just pop out of here. Yeah, it's kind of gross. Not too terrible. Let's clean that up. 
I have to, I, I'd be working down here, but since I'm doing it on camera, I have, to, I have to hold this up like this so you can see what the hell I'm doing. I thought this was cool on the other one. It's actually on most machines now, the coil sleeve is um, made out of nylon, but these are actually made out of brass. They look like uh, shells, like ammunition shells. Kind of neat. Now, remember I had said earlier that some mechanisms are designed to run dry and some are designed to run uh, with a little bit of oil on them. Coils are one of those things that the, the plunger is intended to run dry. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room in them. Oh yeah, that was dirty. Uh, there's some wiggle room in them so that they can move smoothly. Um, if you were to oil this and uh, every time it moves in and out, it's going to pick up um, dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff. And pretty soon this whole thing's going to be filled with gunk and it won't move at all. So yeah, don't do that. There you go. That only took a second to do. this coil stop since I have it out of here. It actually looks like it's in good shape. So that's a plus. When I put the coil stops back on, I actually don't tighten down both screws uh, or I don't tighten down either screw until I get both in and then I can let it sit sort of naturally and then tighten them down this way they'll be even instead of like one you have a little bit of play in them on how it moves and so I kind of hold it into place and then tighten them down may have to adjust it because it all is going to depend on that shaft and its its line of movement here so if this is skewed one way or the other this won't it'll bind but this looks like it's pretty good we'll see when we get this back on all right so let's put this guy back on and how does it go lucky i have another one to compare it to that way oh a little bit of Yeah, it seems like a good movement. This was just a little spacer. It really doesn't do anything. But I, I'll put a little bit of grease on the end because it'll, it'll actually be touching that. And then we'll put the spring back on. We'll put this spring back on. And let's see if we work. So it's still, I'm still not getting a nice smooth movement from this down here. It's, it's slowing it down. Everything else seems to be working. It's nice and smooth. This moves nice and clean. So this section is still uh, gummy too. And it, it could actually be resistance in here. It's hard to tell by just moving it. But I think it's down here. All right, let's take that apart. So we gotta read. I haven't taken one of these off yet, so let's take that spring off. Guess we gotta take these off again. Oh yeah, 
that's that's the problem <laughs> that's some thick nasty stuff right there naphtha on a rag you can fix the world with naphtha on a rag actually I don't think that's true sounds good though yeah You know, I bet a little metal brush would work for this. And if this were a little bit more, like if this metal were in worse shape, I'd probably do that. But it actually, it, it looks clean. It's just, I mean, not clean, but it looks um, undamaged. It's just got crap on it. Pretty clean. Okay. Touch some grease. And how does this go on? It goes on this way. So put a little on the end here. You know what, I got a lot of resistance in that too. So since we're here, we'll fix that. Oh, my cordless screwdriver is running out of juice. Might have to do this old school. This one was oiled. It's 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 got a lot of crap on it. So I told you. Don't grease your coils. I told you. Didn't I tell you? You never listen. That looks pretty good. Okay, put this back together. Oh, dropped. Okay, so the coil is back in uh, and a nice smooth movement uh, on this, uh, on the plunger. So let's stick this thing back on there. How does this fit in there? There we go. Tension this up and see if we fixed it.
probably use another turn. Hey, we just fixed the stepper unit. So there's also, uh, there's some contacts on these switches that we need to make sure are nice and clean. Um, and I think that that's about it to make sure that this thing is up and working. Um, once I get the game, once I get these all cleaned out, then I'll go through each one of these and make sure that all of these points are touching what they're supposed to be touching. Um, but that's, that's basically it. <laughs> You know, eight, eight to ten minutes per stepper um, to clean them out, and you uh, should be good to go. Okay, uh, so that's the video. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe. If you don't like the video, subscribe. And uh, until next time, hopefully next time I'll have this running. All right, thanks for watching.